That's the review for Halloween Resurrection. <laughs> oh! Does it hurt your hair when you take it off? My hair is much, much, much shorter than yours. <laughs> so, that well, always hurts. Hot. Like, every time I take that off, it feels like someone's, like, pulling all my hair out. It's not that it's, like, super, super tight, but it's definitely tight enough to just hurt way more than I thought it would when I take it off. You know, my head, uh, my hair is way shorter than yours, so there's nothing for it to get caught on. Or pull. Today's episode will be covering Halloween Resurrection. Uh, you just finished it. I finished it, what, three days ago? Four days ago? Yeah. So This is the end of our, uh, our Halloween series thus far. Yeah. We're, we're gonna cap it off here. Yeah. Now. I think I'm pretty uninterested with watching anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about we're doing it, because I, we weren't going to do this. We were gonna cover more, like, a Christmas or, like, horror for December, but we were, I finished... I think it's when we finished Kills, after it came out in theaters, I was like, you know, it would be nice to watch them all again. It's been a long time since I've seen most of them, if not all of them, together in a row. Yeah. So I figured, well, I'll just watch them all. And you're like, yeah, I'm okay with this. That's kind of cool. You haven't done it in a while either with all of them. Because you say how you usually end it at, like, uh, Curse or whatever, I think. Um, yeah, oh, last the last time I went through, which was uh, 2020... Uh, I, I I stopped at six. I gave I gave, I threw in the towel. Yeah. Um. So. So I thought it'd be nice for us to go through it all. And after getting through this, like I, I'm done. I'm done for a bit. Yeah. The last time I watched through the entire franchise, um, I was reviewing all the Halloween movies for a website, and I, I reviewed every single one of them. I I went all the way through Rob Zombie's Halloween two, and then what uh, reviewed um. Uh, 2018 that was obviously 2018 so it'd been a little bit yeah since i'd seen especially like uh h2o and resurrection i hadn't seen them in a while and you know i kind of wanted to to, to go through the whole thing and just say fuck it you know finish and, and do the the halloween remakes but i just don't have the energy i, I already care. know how i feel I'm i know how i feel about those movies too and it's just like it would only just be to complete the series because i don't like either one of them yeah so. I I guess starting off, I've always hated Resurrection. I've hated it the most out of all of them. And I've always felt strongly like this movie's dog shit. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I think it comes from the fact when I watched it, I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're a teenager, you take these films so much more personally. Like, you really do. All, all oh, yeah, you don't, you don't have the you don't have franchise the, uh, films you take personally. You don't have the mental fortitude to take a step back and say, it's a fucking movie. It's, yeah. a, it's a product. That was sold to people. Yeah, you just sit there and you're like, so. you know, how dare you hurt my franchise? Like, you fucking invented it. Yeah, like we own Halloween. Yeah. And or Friday or Nightmare or yeah, whatever. Uh, Hellraiser, Chucky, all that shit. And I just couldn't get over how much I fucking hated that movie for years. And rewatching it now, I just sat there like, this movie's so fucking inconsequential. Like, it means nothing. Like... Hating this movie takes so much more time out of your day than just saying, yeah, I'm just not going to watch it again. Like, it fucking sucks. Like, it, it isn't a good movie. It's bad. But no, it's it's pretty bad. I just, for sure. I couldn't say I hate it anymore. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I saying that I hate movies in general, it just takes too much effort to hate something like that. I, I defend, depending on what it truly, is. Like, unless it's truly actually like harmful damaging to society yes. or something like but you know this is just a, a really really bad movie it's a bad movie in the franchise it's probably it, no honestly i i don't think this is even the worst movie in the franchise that we've watched that we've watched i, get, I gave five a pass as far as having a good time but as a movie i think it is a, a way worse structured and uh i think the movie itself is it can be borderline incoherent at times this movie tells a very simple story it just sucks <laughs> It's I don't not know confusing. If it's, I don't it know if five is like, a worse movie. I think I think that five barely limps across the finish line as being a finished product. I think so. five is possibly the worst edited film I've seen in a long time. If, yeah, if yeah. I was an editor saying what's one of the worst movies, five would be like, that's bad. Like, 
I've never seen jump cuts in a regular scene before where it's like you did that three yeah. times in, in like how many milliseconds? But this it's simple, but it's so fucking atrociously of its times that it's like Oh yeah. We not? I don't agree. I don't disagree at all. I it, think that it, this movie's very uh it is lucky it is as simple as it is. Yeah. Because that's what it has going for it, is that it's, it's a completely coherent movie. Yeah. Like you know what's going on. Yeah. You know what happens. There's a beginning, a middle, and end that you understand. But I guess I get more frustrated with five just because it's like you have good characters from a previous movie. You had a good setup. And in between you just didn't finish your movie. <laughs> I, I, I guess that's why I actually like five more of those because there are still good characters in it. Well, in this movie, I'm like, I hate almost all of you. Yeah, I just think I, that I Ford like did all the heavy lifting. I like two people max in this film. I think Ford just did all the heavy lifting for five, though, and, and I can't really give five the credit for that. Five is other like... Than, other than Jamie and, and I, well, Lewis is an asshole, but I like Lewis. Yeah, Lewis is a different portrayal, but it's, it's interesting to watch. Yes, but I, I think that a lot of the heavy lifting for the best characters in five is done by four. So Yeah, but Jamie's still a good character in five. Yeah, she's still fine and she's well acted and all that stuff. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that like five doesn't cut its own teeth on characters in a very effective way. So there's really nothing that that movie brought to the table from a character perspective that wasn't previously introduced in four. So... I, I guess it, it's kind of funny because I think you can compare this film a lot with Five in ways because this film ruins H2O the same way Five ruins Five four. ruins Four, but it also it all they're also very um, studio driven driven yes. movies because Five obviously was made by Trankus so it was ostensibly a, a uh, independent kind of film. But it was made because, wow, 4 did so well. We need to rush this movie into production. And they didn't technically rush this one into production. It took them a couple of years to get this one out. But this one just feels like one of those things where it's like, well, I just want to throw another movie out there so I can get a couple billion dollars back. Yes, for sure. Like, there's nothing in this that's mildly interesting. This movie honestly. has no merits of its own. Everything about no. it is about what's popular of the time we got to do that let's make a movie about it let's make some money halloween's still a name let's let's use it yeah it, there's nothing and and having read that book about all the failed sequels and the ones we could have gotten mm -hmm. it's just it's like this is this is what we we landed on because they had this the, the Weinsteins had this this focus on on just embracing trends and that's that's the whole mantra that their development for this movie came out of was, we need to have this thing in it. That's so Miramax, and, it, and that kept it kept like, going too. Like the it thing with Miramax, if it's not a film that's you know in charge by a really prominent director that has their own vision, it really just feels like they're trying their hardest to say like, hey, this is popular. Let's fucking use it. Let's try to just make some money off of this. Let's let's ride this train. And Miramax yeah. always did that, and it showcases. I mean, they even have the fucking two teenagers dressed as fucking Pulp Fiction in this movie, which is like, oh my god, that is funny. You have to admit though, like having the really skinny white kid be Jules is really funny. I I was because I didn't realize I forgot about that completely. Yeah. And for some reason, I thought, for my mind, I thought that they dressed up as the Blues Brothers. I thought that too. No, immediately I'm like, oh, they're Blues Brothers. But when it said, do you think, do you think they know if that they know we're from Pulp Fiction? And then I looked directly at the guy who was Jules, and I'm like, that is bad. It's not bad. I, it's, it's just one of those things where it's just like, uh. <laughs> I think it's like. You know, am, am I, am I going to start picketing at fucking, you know. The wine scene's yeah. doorstep because they they did that. No, but it, it's just like watching like that is a that was a choice. That's so funny. certainly a choice for your that movie. That is so funny because I love the idea of this like really skinny like fourteen year old kid being like, I definitely want to go with Sam Jackson for Halloween. Like that's just really fucking funny to me. Yeah, they they were and it's funny too because they were um we were talking about how how weird the stuff with Deckard was. Yeah, it's bad. The other day. And 
I was just like, oh, he, he must be like 16, 17 or something. He's, he's legitimately a freshman. He's, he's a freshman in high school. Yeah. And it's just like, that is really weird. Yeah. It's really uncomfortable. They make it a point of saying no freshman's been invited to this party before. Yeah. Which, like, I know we're not even talking about the Halloween shit of the movie yet. Like, at all of Michael Myers, but... Well, Deckard's a big part of the fucking movie, though. Yeah, he is. So, but... you have to talk about Deckard. But... The idea in high school that no 14-year-old has been invited to this party. Why is this party a prominent thing in high school? Why does this one guy keep throwing the... Is he just kept go doing senior year? Like, why? <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense to me. Is, is he, he, like, uh... a... Like, um, he just never grew up. He goes, like, I really liked my high school years, so people could just keep coming to my house to party. Like, how is that a tradition? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, I had to give him credit, because I was actually laughing during that exchange, because they're like, yeah, like, no freshman's ever been, been invited to this party. And Deckard's like, we were only invited, so <laughs> your sister invited us, so we didn't tell your mom about her tattoo. Yeah. He's like, my point still stands. It's like, well. <laughs> I actually like <laughs> That's the funny. high school stuff in the movie decently. Like, it's very it's American right. Pie. They're definitely ripping on that. Yeah. And it's all right. It'd be better if it was just they were in college as college freshmen. Yes. It makes and she more was like sense. a college junior or something. Like, the idea of them being like, oh, no college freshmen's been invited to this. It makes more sense because fraternities have consistent parties. It's not about one dude who's in high school, which doesn't make sense. There's it's, also dumbasses who don't who don't go to the college who, throw, who will throw parties for college kids. Yeah, like, th this would consistently make sense. And it wouldn't be creepy that he's talking to this girl and you know you could convince that he is a college freshman it's not that difficult so yeah. the fact that he's just a high school freshman is so unnecessarily creepy in this movie that you can't like he's supposed to be a good guy at the end like oh he's the reason that they survive it's like yeah but he's manipulating this woman that he's an undergrad when he's a fucking high school freshman like you can't yeah. not have that in the back of your head where it's like a we did it, Deckard. Oh, you're still a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think I think that they're. I just sit there and I'm like, well, I mean, like, yeah, one of those is better than the other, but that doesn't mean that the other one didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. It's, especially with the dialogue in the beginning where he's like, that. Yeah, it's kind of like we're dating. No, it's fucking not, no, douchebag. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like you're manipulating her. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. There's there's really that. It that doesn't help with it being totally a mere Max about. film either. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, I, I didn't remember the age gap being that large. I mean, actually, they, they never say how old she is, so maybe she's a college freshman. I don't fucking know, but um, I don't think they ever state how old she is. But when they say college student and then freshman in high school, then it's like wow. Because for some reason, I thought that he was like a, he was like a senior or something. I don't know why, or, or, or he was in college and he just was across the country or something yeah so it's just like, that's fucking weird bro. <laughs> it's a weird choice it's a weird choice it's not abnormal in movies that they, they do something like this but not it's abnormal in that time period cer that's for certainly sure. not cool not the coolest yeah doesn't age very well that's for sure no and it's really it was really funny uh, ironic because you know Kay Sackoff's character says you know she, he could be 50 and bald now he's 15 and prepubescent <laughs> yeah yeah he's bald in different ways <laughs> uh. no like i think it's funny though because in my perspective some of the stuff with the kids is the most fun part about the movie yeah because it's, shit just, in the it's house just it's bad boring. like it's really like hey this is not good yeah, I, th I think that one of the biggest sins that this movie cr that this movie commits is that it's just fucking boring. Like, I, yeah. I don't find it particularly interesting. Um, I guess to wind back and go more into the Halloween direction of it, though, I remember hating, and I mean hating, what happens with Laurie in the beginning. Mm -hmm. On rewatch, how do you feel about that? Because I feel pretty differently about it. It doesn't make me angry. No, me either. I just don't care. It's just kind of a whatever weird thing. I like the fact that it logically makes sense as to why she dies. 
Because for yeah. some reason in my head, I always played out like he just fucking broke into her room and just killed her. But the oh, way it yeah. functions, it's like she dies because she's traumatized that she could kill another innocent man. Yes. Which is good because if you show Michael a sign of weakness, he's going to take it. And I think that's a pretty good yeah. way of conveying her downfall and yeah. absolutely ruining all of it with having her kiss him, but whatever. Yeah, that's the, it's just like, what the fuck is that, dude? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, okay, I, I don't know why. Why is Michael this? getting with his family members in yeah. the Dimension era? Yeah, you gotta ask some questions. But, uh, it'd be so funny if someone, like, out of the audio clips, every time Michael was on, like, screen, so when she kisses him, he just goes, ew, yucky. <laughs> that's uh, wrong. Yeah, I, I was sitting there when I was watching that, when watching the, the whole, like, her reaching for the mask, and I'm like, on the one hand, audience vision, that's dumb. On the other hand, though, legitimately yes. traumatized woman who probably would be doing something like that. Yeah, it's dumb. That being but said, it makes, sense. it makes it makes sense in context. The fact that it's even happening at all is stupid because of the way that H2O ended perfectly, but it doesn't matter because the movie exists, so it doesn't matter how, how they wanted that first that previous movie to end. They also make her still a strong character in Resurrection, which I totally forgot. With yeah, she her still fights. Being very smart, never taking any of the pills, faking everything. Yeah, she pre she prepared for this. I mean, it's a reflection back to how Michael sat in her, his cell for fifteen years and waited till he very... broke out, and so it's her waiting for him to come come to her. I will say, I think the five minutes her of her on screen in this movie definitely set up for them saying let's make her even fucking crazier in 2018 because like the way she is in this movie like her mannerisms her franticness it's like i can totally see someone watching this and saying i have an idea and then helping create 2018 not that it's the exact same thing in any way i'm not at all insinuating that but you can see how like you see h2o and you're like okay that's a very different way of portraying this character but you see her in five minutes in resurrection it's like i i can build on this and then you have 2018 yeah. so even her fucking bars long in house. long fucking messy hair too yeah instead of having locking bars in her house she's yeah. got a fucking crane to catch michael with on top of the building swing him out over the edge of the building fucking acme trap over here I also, it's something really funny about just, like, Michael killing people and then just giving the, the knife, like, here, buddy, this is all you. He's like, yeah, I just framed him. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny to me, just being like, yeah, not gonna think it's me this time. Fucking idiot's got a clown mask. <laughs> also, what, how big did your eyes bulge when that guy says, oh, I'm John Wayne Gacy? I, 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 was, I was expecting it. Oh, you were? Yeah, I, I remember that part of the movie. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, it's to me, it's more like he's saying, like, oh, this is the amount of people we killed, that, that. And I'm like, you're forgetting a big part about what John Wayne and Gacy did that you're not listing right now. Yeah. And if I watch this movie and I remember this line and I looked him up, I'm going to be asking a lot more questions as to why that name was dropped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm John Wayne Gacy. I did this. I used to perform at parties. How about you also say pedophile, please? Like, <laughs> yeah. can you also list that part? Nope. Don't talk about that movies. Then he lists all the facts for Michael Myers, all the times he's come to Haddonfield and all that shit. Yeah, it's their big exposition dump for people who are, aren't caught up on the movies. I think it functions because of the, the setup with the fucking John Wayne Gacy shit, but... Yeah, it makes sense. It's just one of those things where I'm sitting there and I'm like... Bullet point. Yeah, yeah. I'm just sitting here like, okay, I guess we're going to sit here. Yeah, you literally just go and take it like, okay, well, hold on a second. We got this one down. Gonna... Okay, cool. Check marked. Yeah. Check mark for exposition dump number one. And then after that scene's over... The rest of this film has nothing to do with Halloween. <laughs> that's just... that's also another like you know, I, I said in the previous episode how much I think that like H2O doesn't feel like Halloween. This could you could sub out Michael Myers for fucking any character. Yeah. There's nothing about it. And and that's not to say that Brad Laurie does a bad job, because I think he does a really good job. But 
there's nothing in this movie that expressly says this has to be a Halloween film. Yeah. You could sub this out with with a faceless killer. Just don't call it the Myers house. I think the nicest thing about rewatching this was reaffirming. I do think the resurrection mask still kicks ass. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like they never in some in some lighting. It can be a little iffy. And there was a couple shots at like at the hospital, especially where he had like Halloween six syndrome, where his hair was fucking flying out. Yeah. Where he seemed like his hair was really big. Yeah. For some he's reason. Super Saiyan hair. Yeah. I so the same thing in the beginning. That that was the only thing where I was like, ah, that looks really weird. But like for the rest of the movie, especially the way that it's lit, it, it looks really really good. Like, cause the the eye holes are big enough, and it's filmed close up where you could see his eyes. For some. But he scenes, has bla- but he has black oil paint on. Not you not just that it. though. A lot of the time, you, you don't see the eyes. Like it's yeah, not most of the time you're out. seeing it. It's very shadowed. So I thought they did a good job with showing him on screen. And when they do show his eyes with the oil paint, he does look pretty sinister in the movie. Yeah. I'd say out of all the sequel masks, it still would probably be my favorite. It's actually really, it's really good. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was funny to buy the mask as like a joke because of the fucking movie, but like I'm, I'm glad I have it. Like I do like this mask a lot. Yeah, I really dig it. It's, uh, it looks really good on the actor uh, as far as like proportions to his body. It's not yeah. like you know Halloween Five where the neck is flared out like crazy, or the freaking head's bulbous as fuck. Yeah, you know it, it looks like. It should be where it is. It looks natural. And, and like the but, counter to it for six being so skin tight, it it looks like it's just a face. Yeah. You no, know, it feels like a mask that's form fitting. Yeah. Perfect middle ground. Yeah, it looks great. And also, like Brad Laurie, when you do get to see his eyes, his performance is really strong. His phys- his physical mannerisms are really good. I wish he had a better movie to be in. Yeah. Because I think he would be legitimately like remembered as a strong Myers if he got a really good film around him. You know, if he played in, in H2O instead of Chris Durand or, you know, he got another movie after this, you know, there's a couple of cool sequel ideas that if they brought him back for it, it could have been really cool. But they didn't. So if they took this mask and they continue this franchise as normal and kept this mask and just kept going, it like it would be really nice to have that kind of a consistency to a Myers mask that's strong but i almost sneezed stands. and i yeah. tried not to and my eyes are welling up i look like i'm crying because like i'm it'd be funny if someone's like man he's really upset they didn't do this mask again but no i just really <laughs> didn't want to sneeze yeah if you subbed out this mask and this actor and put him in h2o you'd actually have a much better movie yeah, and it, it I think he'd be a much stronger Myers for that movie, and I think that he could have been a cool one going forward. It's too bad he didn't get another chance. But yeah, um, there's a video I want to do with you. Actually, we can do like a tier list for all the, the Halloween masks. I think that'd be pretty cool to do. But sounds I, good to me. I definitely think I'd put this one for the very top of mind. I think anyone will argue too. the first is the best. Yeah, I don't think I, don't, I think most people would agree. I would say most people. Going through it, I've come to appreciate the Rob Zombie Halloween mask a the lot fir- more. The first Rob Zombie Halloween mask is actually legit. I like it more than the 2018 one, to be honest. Pre before, are you saying as a whole, or pre or pre rot or after rot, or just the first one? The just, whole, just in, no matter the, what, the whole first movie. I think it's really well done. I think it's well shot. I like the way it's it portrays mask. itself on camera. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a real good mask. I like it. I like Tyler Maine. I it's a little can't too say big. Same but... for the, the second one, but yeah, yeah. what mask? Yeah, he barely wears. But one. I, I think it's nice for Resurrection's mask. It fits very well. I, I think it, it sucks. Like, I think going back when I knew I really didn't like this movie, I was like, I don't look forward to it. So when good things happen, it's like, this has actually been kind of nice. Some of this stuff isn't that bad. Uh, I like the best friend chef character. I like... Some scenes with Buster Rhymes is okay. I like Michael Myers in the movie a lot. I like the opening. Oh, boy. As a graphic designer, nothing is uglier than those opening credits, though. 
the fucking gradients with like the 2002 Pepsi it, it, logo type like 3D it looks bubbling. Like, it, it looks like a fucking direct video movie. Like it's it, it so looks ugly. really bad. It, it's, I can't believe it's there. Like it, it's so in my face. Like, man, you guys just have no talent. <laughs> like to yeah. say this is what we're gonna do. To be completely honest, this entire movie feels like it's direct to video. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like I, I don't need you know a, a gargantuanly scaled Halloween film. And that's not oh, like, necessarily the, the house a hint feels like it's it just... either. I mean, it looks like it's direct to video, but I'm just saying like. Direct to video doesn't mean the movie's always bad. No, all I'm no, saying. no. It, it just feels like it's a movie that they didn't take much time on. Hundred percent. And it looks like it's a movie that uh, they didn't ha they didn't have a, a budget for. And the, like I, I like I like isolated movies. It's mostly in the, in the Myers house, but it all just feels so fake. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like a real place. And I understand that part of that is because of how Dangertainment dressed the setup. But, like, you can tell there are some scenes where they just built a Myers house on a soundstage, even the exterior. How do you feel about the way the Myers house is presented in this film? It's it's a weird thing to talk about because it's like, on the one hand, I think the house itself looks fine just because it's like it's a normal house. I think the, the exterior outside. looks very similar. Yeah, but... I, I think that it's hard to talk about how they present it because the whole point about it is it's very, very theatrically done for the show. Yes. The in-movie show. So it's kind of hard to really say, is this an accurate Myers house? Because it's not supposed to be. No. Um, it's fine. It's fine. I just I just think that it looks super... It's just visually very unappealing. It, it feels very... Um, sound stagey. I think the only problem stems from uh, most of the last act, really, where like they start getting outside of the house, and it, and it's like that house isn't that big. Like I've seen the exterior of it; you shouldn't be able to like get on top of a roof from out that window. It's yeah. just a regular colonial; it doesn't mesh together to this big giant rooftop. So that stuff doesn't make sense. But I think with the way they present it and they showcase the staircase and the rooms, it's like okay. For this movie, it's a good rendition of what the Myers house should look like with obviously stupid shit thrown in, like the fucking baby chair with the straps on it. Like, it's supposed to be theatrical, and it, having that be a plot point helps because if it didn't, if I'm watching it, I'd be like, this is fucking stupid. We know he's a normal yeah. kid growing up. Like, yeah. I just know, like, like, it being all dressed up and all that stuff is fine. I just think it's really bizarre how it just feels like you're not inside of an actual house because ostensibly it is supposed to be the Myers house with yeah. all the stuff on top of it. And it just doesn't feel like you're they're at a real place to me. I visually. Think the, one of the biggest things too is when they get to the basement, they have like the whole fake, uh, hey, there's a fucking trap door in here. Oh, you go onto it. Oh, no one can see us. There's no cameras. Oh, there's like a fake wall that collapses. But behind it, there's another entrance that does exist, that Michael Myers does live inside, where it's like, okay, this is not theatrics anymore. This is just part of the Myers home. That's fucking dumb. Yeah. I, the whole, there's like... There's a full-ass wall falls on top of, the, of them. Yeah. The, the I think the, the little prop of the, the dead rat that's alive, that's a pretty cool prop, but... I don't like it just being part of the Myers house. Like, it's also something like really fucking stupid that I've never liked the idea of like Michael Myers torturing animals. Like, I just feel like he's so above that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like he's like that's low tier killer. That's not me. That's that's low tier. Like I don't do that. Yeah, and that's kind I of like one humans. of the things that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to bitch too much about them, but you know that's kind of the thing that they bring in with the. The zombie movies is the whole like he abuses that. animals and I hate that all the stupid shit. He where doesn't it's just, like, even really abuse people either. He usually just goes like, "Fuck you." He just kills them. Yeah, he doesn't care. The kills does, in this he movie. He does mess with them sometimes though. He the kills mess. in this movie are very reminiscent of the first one. Yeah, I they, like someone that. gets pinned. To, someone gets pinned to a door. Yep. Um, there's one cool, I guess, creative kill in the first in the um. 
the very, like towards the beginning, kind of where he uh, he kills the guy with the camera. Oh, it's it's inventive. It's something I've never seen before. I, hate it, I guess personally. at least. Well, no, I'm not saying it's good. Yeah, <laughs> but it's something at least I have. They tried something I've never seen before at least, but it's the way that it's done, the slowness of it. Um, and the, whole, the way it's I, not important, it's as it, done as a joke. Yeah, and I get really tired of the whole thing where it's like someone's getting killed on camera, but no one's paying attention to it because they're doing yeah. something else and dance around. And like, and yeah, you know, bit. at that time, it's not as big of a trope. So like, sure, you can get a free pass in that time period. But even in this movie, it's stupid. Like, if yeah. I had never seen that trope before, I still would not like this. Yeah, it's just weirdly executed. Um, Rosenthal kind of did like redid himself a bit because he did does the whole like knife through the skull shot, which is very reminiscent of Mr. Garrett getting the claw yep. hammer through his skull through his scalp. Um, actually, uh, Rosenthal's in the movie. Oh, is he? Oh, he's he's a professor. he's a professor. Yeah, Doctor Mixter is from the, the doctor from uh, Halloween Two. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a weird side point. He's actually like his little teeny piece of the movie. He's actually pretty good in. <laughs> yeah. So it's, pr- it's pretty. There's something surprising. about that university that I say like that shouldn't be part of Haddonfield though. It just feels weird. Yeah, it doesn't feel like Haddonfield. I I even in six I don't like Haddonfield having a university. Yeah. It makes the town seem too big personally. Yeah, I agree. I think it should be smaller. Maybe it should be like a town next to Haddonfield or whatever. Although the college we went to was in, not a big town, no, like, no, no. I it, it having a college, it definitely didn't didn't make the town feel bigger so much. That, but they have a university. That's like the a thing. Like this is like a four-year school where it's like, yeah, we're gonna dorm in Haddonfield. Like you're gonna it, dorm like, in Haddonfield. It'd be like if if we we dressed up fucking stores, yeah, as as Haddonfield. It's yeah, just like it's why is there weird. a university? Yeah, it is odd to me. I, I don't like Haddonfield having a university. It, it just comes down to the fact that the first movie never sets up any neighboring towns. Because if they did, it, it would be in Haddonfield. R- not the, uh, Ridgemont, but that I don't know if that even exists in this universe. Yeah. Like, they, they should have... Oh, uh, I can't remember what town what town that Nurse Marion lived in at the NH2O. But it was not Haddonfield. It was near Haddonfield. I can't remember what the name of the city was. I thought she's in Haddonfield when beginning. she dies. I thought it said that, I thought it said a different uh, city name. No, she's in Haddonfield when she dies. Uh, I I don't think it said Haddonfield. Oh. But I would have just had it be like so. I mean, it sucks. Like, no, no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't have to be a Haddonfield University because they're not at the university anymore. They could go fucking anywhere. Be like fucking Smith's Grove University or something. Like, just be at well, Smith's it, Grove. It, be like a town. Like, well, she. I guess she is. She is uh, studying psychiatry, uh, psychology. So yeah, whatever. I guess she's studying at Smith's Grove Sanitarium. So just I don't know. It's weird at being a university. Uh, I like the way they kill the dude from American Pie. Where he jumps through the fucking mirror. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it, I have questions though. Like, <laughs> did they just have a two-way mirror in the house, or did Freddy put that in? And and does Michael? Uh, there, I had questions about that. It, it is kind of a goofy, weird kill. Yeah. Um, it, but it's just like, why is? I have to assume it's a two-way mirror because Michael knows he's there. <laughs> so it's like he's omnipresent, that... man. He goes, I know there's a fucking horny teenager behind this. Right through the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's Speaking like trying to make a dramatic entrance. He goes, You didn't think I'd go through a mirror, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I got you, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> through the wall. Um, yeah, I... I, I. I really don't like that character. Oh, I hate him. He's horrible. Oh, pretty much, except for the chef best friend, all the men suck in this movie, man. Yeah. Oh, Deckard's okay. Yeah, no, he's not. He's a piece of shit, but yeah, yeah, he's yeah. at least somewhat likable, I guess. But the the one that goes with the... the I honestly can't tell you any of these, these fucking characters. I don't remember his name. I can't even tell you the, the main girl's name. And I was I just watched the movie. They're so not memorable. I know some of the actors. I don't but know I, her name. I know... The actress's name is Bianca Kajlich, but... Yeah. 
I, I, and Katie Sackoff. I know Katie Sackoff. Yeah. She's in plenty of things I watch, but you know, I, I can't tell you any of these people. Other other than Buster Rhymes, his name's Freddie. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. Um, but the guy who goes with her, who's saying he starts off with the music pontific- major, he's like the music major that pontificates like crazy in his fucking is his intro video that he does. Oh my god. It's just oh, it's eye roll inducing. I know that's the point, too. So it's I'm not I'm not docking the movie for that, but it's just like you you, you lay me lay you give me that, and it's just like none of these characters have any dimension to them. None of them are interesting. The worst it, part like, is like when, when they talk die about too. like stock slasher characters. This is the movie I will point to. Oh, well, 100 percent. It's, it's just like um, there's nothing to clicking this a box. Like this is this character. This is this character. Yeah, they're there's barely no they barely have like actual person. Well, they have personalities, I guess. Well, like they, they have nothing going for them. You don't know anything about them. Yeah. Really. The girl makes a fucking homophobic joke about how she wouldn't sleep with him and because then it wants be, to it fuck be, him it anyways. Constitute lesbianism or something. Yeah. And she's like, okay. And she's like, she's talking all she's talking all these psych, psychology terms off and, and, and speaking you know, all this all this like, you know, I'm really smart dialogue, which would be annoying no matter who the fuck was saying it. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's like it's almost like they try to give these characters some kind of a fake idea of dimension by giving them their own little quirks. You know, she's she thinks she's intelligent. The guy, not she doesn't think she's intelligent. She probably is smart, but she she thinks she's too smart for this. Yes, and she she and she's using. I, I don't know if she's trying to play hard to get with the guy or or if it's supposed to be him wearing her down, which is worse. <laughs> it's gross. But uh, both of the principal guys, even even honestly, the chef is much nicer about it. But there are some moments where it seems like the chef is suggesting that he wants to bang the main girl, <laughs> or um, you know, I don't it's read not, it like that. It's not necessarily that she say he's saying that, or that he, she maybe wants to take her on a date. But it seems like she he sometimes has that kind of a moment where she he's like, I'm the guy best friend, but I'm kind of interested. So he says something kind of sly, nothing like bad or anything. Not not like the other two guys, but you know, there, there's there's a couple of moments where he has some some lines where I'm like, yeah. But uh, yeah, those two guys in particular, and I'm I mean I don't like Freddie, but they're just so bad. The Freddie's yeah. a piece of shit too. Well, yeah, Freddie's a piece he, of the, shit, but for different reasons. The, the reason I hate Buster Rhymes' character is that there's no accountability for the shit he does. There's no consequence yeah. for his actions. Like he survives, and he he's survives. like, it, the whole moral at the end is like, yo, what we went through is real. It's like you know you're responsible, right? Like this is he, all he your fucking fault. He didn't even. Um, he wasn't supposed to live. He shouldn't originally. have lived. They brought him. They brought him back through reshoots, I believe, if I remember correctly. So he was supposed to die when he gets stabbed twice. Because they show him. Because he does. It doesn't make sense. make sense. He picks her up over his shoulder. It's like, yo, you got stabbed there. Like, how the Wouldn't fuck are you gonna pick shoulder. her up, man? Yeah. I I am a little less mad about the kung fu shit though, because one, it is funny, it's and two. It's way funnier because it's technically like foreshadowed because he watches kung fu movies. He watches, yeah. I I, I get all that. It, it's not like it's offensive. Like so many people get so mad about Buster Rhymes kicking Michael Myers through a window and all this shit. It's so fucking. Dumb, it doesn't make me funny. mad. It's just stupid. <laughs> like it's just so stupid. Him it's, during is, that scene. It is trivial, trivializing your villain for one him thing. Him during that scene is fine. The end where he's like gloating over Michael Myers, like, I really wish he died. Like, it's just like, I hate this character. This dude literally gaslights everyone and be like, this is a really important opportunity. But what I'm really going to do is fuck with you and try to make money and make it a fucking reality TV show. And then I'm responsibility for all your, responsible for all these deaths. Take no accountability. My motherfucking girlfriend is dead. And I'm just pe- I'm just chilling, bro. It's good. Nah, man. Nah, man. He apologized. He he's the worst. I wouldn't go as far as to say that he's 100 percent accountable for people dying so much. 
you know, this wasn't supposed to happen. He didn't. Like, no, no, this no, is no, supposed to be just a funny show. To a degree, yes, he is responsible yeah. for sure. But I, I guess the reason why he there's no accountability taken on him is because they get Michael. Get Michael. I think it'd be different if there was like a scene where he's like, "All these people are dead, and it's all my fault." Like he at least took some semblance. But yeah, there's a scene where he's he like, says, "He's like, yo, people are motherfucking dead up in here." He goes, "Yeah, funny about that, isn't it, huh?" Yeah, well, he he says to her, she, he's like, "I'm so sorry. Like, if I had known, pretty much, like, I I had no yeah. idea you had to believe me." Yeah. So like, he obviously he apologizes. I mean, if yeah, people sure. if he didn't, you call but, that an apology. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's he should he should have died. He straight. That's not even because I don't like. It's not even. Not, that's not even because I don't like Freddy. But it's like, yeah, no. he's demonstrated that he is. This is a he. He strong art, not strong armed, but he he manipulated a bunch of college students into coming into the show. Not just, not just to he be in to the them, show yeah. and to mess around, but he's also exploiting them having sex. Which I mean, yeah. again, like if they're choosing to do that. I mean that's on but them. they're not choosing to do but that on not. camera. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, the point was that they weren't supposed to have a camera where they went to go do that. Yeah. Um. But he's he's just like toasting to it while it's going on in the background too. And it's just like you could tell like he's he's doing all this stuff. He's exploiting people for money. Um. I mean, obviously they consented to it and they signed signed for it, but they weren't signed. They didn't know that they were signing on for all this other stuff. I guess. Yeah, they're being manipulated. Without t- taking Michael like, out of the equation. Like, in reality but. TV, people obviously know what they're getting themselves into. Bullshit or not, it's like, hey, we know what this is. He clearly didn't tell them and manipulated all of them into saying, like, hey, you're going to figure out what caused Michael Myers, which is not at all what they signed agreement to. Which, you know, makes him legally liable, but whatever. <laughs> but I hope none of them are law students. Oh, no, they <laughs> they did... They did. They were pitched that this was going to be finding out the mystery of Michael Myers and they were pitched that stuff. yes, but that's, that's not what they signed what, for. That's not what happened though. You, no, of course you're it's not what happened. Pitched about happened. figuring out what Michael Myers like how he became that. You're not pitched for. You're not actually figuring that out. I'm gonna scare some I motherfucking dumbasses. House. Yeah. But I think it'd be a. It's like ghost hunters, but with fucking serial killers. Yeah. The scene where he shit talks Michael Myers, thinking he's the cameraman. It would be a good scene if he died. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing worse than Michael Myers being like, "Yo, that kind of hurts." Yeah, it just kind of mean. He just walks away. Like, I just it's something about like, why the fuck would he just leave? Like, it makes no sense why he would walk away at all. Tyra Ty- Ty- Banks ain't dead yet at that point, I don't think. Because he, oh, yeah. he says, that's actually really he, kind of funny. Like, imagine he says, he's there, he like, says, go, oh, he says, go God. into the garage and help her out. And oh, basically, what Freddie did was say, go into the garage and kill my girlfriend. Yeah, they're like, yeah, dude, get the fuck out. I was like, I want to kill your fucking girlfriend, bro. Like, like, like that's the last shot. <laughs> I want to gut your fucking wife, man. Yeah. I think, it, it, like, yeah, he didn't. He could have killed Freddy on the spot, but it's like it's almost kind of even worse because he sent her. He sent him into the garage to kill his girlfriend. Dude, that that shit is so funny. I love the idea of like him just being like an upset like child. Like, I can't believe you said that. He barges in this girl. Oh my god! And he goes, "You fucking." He said some. You're gonna pay for that shit. He said. <laughs> That was yeah. rude. There there's some some kills in this that are reminiscent of the original. I would also I would I would say that that the there's first. no kill in this movie that I would say is particularly good. The only so I would say the, the almost... kill the kill for the chef is is kind of cool, but it's a callback to the first movie obviously. Callback, yeah. Um which is fine, whatever, but I like it. I think it works well in the scene because the chef is doing it to protect his friend. Yeah. So it makes his death have meaning at the same time. It's so fucking mean that he just keeps stabbing him. Even though he's yeah. clearly already fucking dead. So it's I really... like that. But besides that, they're all 
like I, you said, pretty bad or just inconsequential. It, it's, it's really wild to me because it's just like he's swinging the knives. He's like, yeah, bro, don't come, you know, come at me, bro. I'll get you, I'll get you, I'll get you. And then he just gives up and runs <laughs> the door. Yeah. Um, high, bro. <laughs> and, <laughs> he's fucking, yeah, he's I fucking mean, baked. At least unlike the camera guy, he didn't just back himself into a corner because he did try to still swing the knife before he dies. Yeah, so he tried. Guy's fucking stupid. I guess. Yeah, I, I, that was the one thing. It's just like it's so slow. He just backs up, and also essentially, this guy probably knows that Freddy's supposed to show up with a knife. Yeah. And as Michael Myers, so maybe he thinks he's just there earlier. So you'd think that he would say, "Come on, Freddy," but obviously he wouldn't do that because then you would spoil that reveal. Yeah. In the later part of the movie, but it is just kind of weird that he's just like, "Oh yes, this is definitely Michael Myers in front of me instantly." And backs himself into a corner. Yeah. And it, so slowly backs himself into a corner. How, how convenient that um, he finished setting up every single camera before he died. Yeah. Really, really convenient and lucky for him, though. That he got his job done just in time. Yep. Also, a movie otherwise. it might be one of those things that, like, retrospectively, because I've seen it a million times, I hate it. But when the music dude gets his head crushed in, it just sucks. It's just such a... You've seen it done so many times just better. It is really funny because, like, he, he claps his hands onto his his head. But they use this, like, stock punch sound effect that I, I've heard in so many dumbass yeah. action movies. It's just like, wow, he really clapped his head hard. <laughs> Blows his fucking eardrums out before he fucking squeezes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> e- <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad that guy died painfully, but, you know, also... Not very interesting, considering. I think what it's contemporaries funny. have done with head crushes. It's just like it's again. It's it's a late nineties, early two thousand slasher movie. It's that like slick, you know, uh, low blood, no suspense kind of horror, slasher movie. Yeah, and it just none of the deaths have impact because not only are they not interesting because they're either slashes. Or, or fucking decapitation, which or, could be or, or done a, if it's artistically done. Yes, it, that all that all could be fine. It's just that there's nothing behind it. Like they're not executed well. They're not really shot all that interestingly. And again, the characters are just so thin that I, I could not give a fuck less. I think some like, of the best scenes in it is when you see him in the POV cameras just walking. Yeah, even some of the times where you see him in the background with the shadows on because he's lit yeah. well. It's just any any time that the actual capitalization of any suspense is supposed to happen, just which there isn't much limits. at all. Yeah, it's just like there's nothing. There, the execution is always off. It never feels... And it's weird because it's like R- Rosenthal did... You know, As much as I don't really love 2 anymore, like R- Rosenthal did a good job with 2. He did a pretty good job with with setting up suspense and and you know executing that stuff with a really good visual flair. But this movie is just so it feels so studio. It feels so corporate. Oh yeah. In comparison, and it just feels like it's kind of just it, uh, it, again. It's it's the two thousands, man. Like this is what two thousand and two. I yeah, think two thousand two. Like there's something about the early two thousands for horror movies, especially too. It's just like they're they're just not. It ain't it, Chief. I'd rather go to a fucking dentist appointment than watch 2000s horror. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously there's like any other decade, there's there's gems, but like yeah, there's you, a there's you a have stylistic good luck finding it's, most of those, dude. Like I I already know a couple of them, but the, uh, the there's there's a, a certain stylistic des- design for this movie that just I I cannot connect with. It's just so dull. There's nothing really it sucks. Uh, like, and like like I said before, I told you when I said to you at work I watched it. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. Like, at the end of the day, a bad movie is just a bad movie. Like, when you're an adult, it's pretty tough to feel any strong, egregious feeling for a film if it's just yeah. bad. Like, a fucking shitty movie is just that. There's nothing more to it like the sexual suggestive stuff and like the manipulation that shit is bad but it helps with the fact it's never like that bad like nobody's getting raped nobody's being like molested or anything which 
You know, oh, the, it's the, not like saying it's America like, oh, your bar gets... is really high up there. It's like, yeah, but still, like the guy, the guy from America Pie gets a little handsy. Yeah, he touches her and stuff. What? Really, like handsy, he putting cameras ass. down her shirt, down her shirt. Yeah, they are pretty much introduced to the oh, fucking he dies, guy. So yeah, I know, but he's the first doesn't... one to die. He's it's a consequence still... to his actions, unlike Freddy. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's still it's just very like. Ugh. It's, it's almost it's portrayed as comedy and it's just like it's that's not funny man it's just not funny one thing i do want to say though about um the the blonde friend is that Katie Sackhoff. yeah she yeah. why like he's stabbing people in this movie like he's he just he's, cuts her fucking head off yeah like one cut it, there's a huge separation of strength with that with a butcher knife where he's just it's like a kitchen knife yeah he's like oh you you thought I was uh, just a regular person. No, I'm a absolute fucking demon. I can just chop your head off. Like, what the fuck? It's actually, it's actually kind of funny because they, they do reflect that in the the blade itself. Towards the end of the movie, they show it in close up as he's walking up to Bianca Kajlich, I believe. Yeah. And there's like a big chip in the blade from where it would have hit bone or something, where yeah. it would actually have broke the blade. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of, that's kind of cool, yeah. But like. It's also like the foreshadowing Woo! where he, he says to um, the, the the chef best friend goes like, oh, you think this is a blade? And the girl goes, no, that's probably an evidence locker. And then that blade will fucking kills him. It's like, yeah, that's, it's just that's kind of, pretty neat. You just kind of just like, oh, yeah, do you think this is the blade? It's like, this is your blade. <laughs> but I was just like, are you fucking stupid? Yeah. Are you that? Are you that dense? Yeah, he's like, are you fucking dumb? He's like, I'm, I'm it's a, a culinary it's a, major. I don't fucking cycle like, me alone. Like, it's a brand new. He, that's even worse because it's a butcher's knife. <laughs> it's something he's in, in, intimately familiar with. Of everything else that's in that drawer, it is brand fucking new. <laughs> it is brand new. <laughs> like, you would think that you'd be like, huh? That's weird. Why is it so brand new? It's also worse for the fact that he is because he knows he's very spiked. smart. He's very yeah. He's very like uh with it. I guess he's he, he's like, the one he catches on quick. He's the one who catches on like this shit is way too easy. Yeah, that's so kind of why like, I like him though. He's like, fuck you guys. Like I'm not dumb. Yeah. Except for cutlery wear apparently, but yeah. Apparently. Like, yeah, this is doesn't make fucking sense. Like, there's no way he just has fucking coloring books about killing cats and shit. I think it's also really funny, but like with, with him, where uh, Michael gives him the time uh, the time to open up a jar of spices, throw it in his hand, and then throw it in his hand. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. Michael's just walking towards him, and he just like reaches in, not doesn't grab a blade instantly, grabs a fucking jar of spices and throws it into Michael's eyes. But the funniest thing, I like to think about it like, because uh, those are new spices they just bought, obviously, because he goes yeah. like, oh. This smells fresh. So, like, the idea of him being like, spice attack, and fucking Mike's like, oh, no, my family never had paprika. Where'd you get this? <laughs> just so weird. Some of the choices, man, are just so fucking weird for this movie. I, I also, we, 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 we've, we haven't gone, like, super duper, like, in depth on just, like, the concept and visual style of using, like, the, the head cams and stuff. Yeah. Look. It's not that this is an idea that couldn't work, but it doesn't work here. I think, in it's my opinion, a, I think it's a concept that doesn't really work for it. I think you have no, a hard I, time I think making can, that POV shit work. I think you can use this conceptually in a horror movie fine. I mean, I don't like found footage kind of things in anything uh, really. You can't use so. it for Michael Myers. No, I agree. You can't. For the way he oh, no. set up as a character, it's it's fundamentally impossible because you're relying on a lot of the time him coming out of the darkness Behind towards somebody, and, and if you have somebody filming that, it's impossible to really make it work. Well, that, in this that's film. kind of why that's kind of why like you know, it's not a you you couldn't do a full movie like this. Yeah, you can. I think that having this you know that kind of style in there for a couple of like specific shots is kind of interesting yeah stylistically but it just looks bad and the way it's edited and cobbled together like there's some some shots where it's just like it cuts rapidly through point of views and i don't know what the fuck's going on like i completely I, lose the geography of the environment I, and 
that's very important for something like this. And for fuck's sake, like it's, there's there are times where you just can't tell what the fuck's going on, and I, it's just it's really frustrating to watch. So you can't you wouldn't do this film nowadays for sure. You just wouldn't. No, no one's gonna do that. That being said. I think nowadays you could do it better because... More clarity. He's a type of character that lends itself well to being in frame for a second, being like, what the fuck is that? And then he's gone. So with yeah. POV, you could use a lot of stuff like that as long as the entire film isn't pure POV. Yeah. But at that point, just don't do it. The POV horror really works for one type of genre for horror. Jump scares. Like... If you're not going to use jump scares, there's really no essence of doing POV most of the time. Yeah. And you do not want to have Michael Myers being a jump scare heavy Halloween film. That's fucking dumb. It's just yeah. ridiculously stupid. I think that the, the immersive quality of found footage and POV horror like this is alluring. Yeah. But I think that you have to pick where you're going to put these kinds of things into certain franchises, especially. And, you know, it's not Rosenthal's fault, I don't think. I think this is something that was mandated by the studio where we were like, we're going to make a movie around this idea. We're going to do it with Michael Myers. And they tried to do it with multiple different kinds of, of trends because like they wanted to do one so badly, so badly with a VR back in this time period. So VR was not great. But they were going to do this whole thing where they go into this virtual world to fight Michael or something. He's just like, this is stupid. Like, let the people make a fucking movie. I feel like it's an idea that you could lend yourself to more with, like, Nightmare on Elm Street. I wouldn't do it either, but, like... Yeah, I mean, you could. I mean, they, fuck, they, they go inside of a comic book in that franchise, so you yeah. can pretty much anything. But... There's for, something for about Michael, him that's just, so... Just doesn't fit. The reason Halloween works is that it's more realistic than the others. It, there's something so innately scary about someone's neighbor becoming a serial killer and just, like, unstoppable. Yeah. Versus, like, some fucking deformed baby that got drowned and came back as a fucking zombie. And some fucking child killer for the first series coming back to haunt you in your dreams and saying, Well, no, I, I exist in your dreams. Or a fucking doll that comes back to life with a fucking madman inside being like, yeah, I'm just a fucking doll that kills you. Like, these yeah. things are innately crazy, wild things that happen. But Michael Myers just could happen. So, making him do this zany, weird shit doesn't work. Yeah. If you do that stuff, you're just really not understanding the point of the first film. And that's not saying you can't like Nightmare on Elm Street, you can't like Friday the 13th, or you can't like Child's Play. If you don't like those series in general, I think that you just don't have a sense of fun in your life. But the Halloween structurally works in a very different atmosphere and world where there has to be some sense of realism. Not too much. You need to have some disbelief, obviously, because Michael Myers is not supposed to be just a regular old-fashioned human. But there needs to be a sense of realism that the other series just tend to forget after a while, which is fine. But you can't do that with him. If you do that with him, things just go off the rails far too fast. Yeah, I agree. And that's Resurrection's problem. That's the biggest thing. Like like I said, going back, I thought the opening was better. Uh, I don't hate every single person. I like maybe one person. So, wow, what an upgrade. Yeah. The, the kung fu fight is fucking stupid, but it's funny stupid. The actual ending I hate. Michael Myers getting fucking cock zapped is ridiculous. I, I, when that happened, I was like, oop, this, this might ruin the movie right there. That's too much on the nose. Like, yeah, he fucking zapped his dong, bro. Okay. They, they do that and they give him this, like, exaggerated ass fucking, like, Looney Tunes bug eye. Yeah. He goes, ah. Starts screaming. There was something funny about, like, um, the corner at the morgue. Like, oh, you got somebody famous. He goes, it's Michael Myers. She goes, no, fuck. <laughs> like, her face being like, shit, no, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I, I would have laughed my ass off if she's like, please don't leave me here. Please don't leave me here alone. Yeah. Or um, she just like, nah, I'm putting in my fucking two weeks. Like, she just quits yeah. on the spot. Dude, he looks bad at the end of this movie. Oh, he looks terrible. Slugman. I'm so, 
It's like he's he's bald now. Yeah. He's bald, Michael Myers. Well, that's uh, his hair on his mask. Maybe it's just no. I know, but like the mask, the hair on the mask is gone. So it's yeah. like people are like, well, he'd be, if we did another one, he'd be walking around all burnt, looking like that. It's just like okay, so he looks like a fucking egghead. Well, realistically, there's no reason for him to have hair if he got into like in kills. No, why the fuck does he have hair? Like, well, he doesn't get burnt. Like you it, know, like, like his his mask doesn't melt or anything. Like yeah, it's just it's, it's crispy. So it's like his his hair would still be intact. No, it wouldn't. In comparison, for sure, he literally was you, left you, in a burning hair fire. Catches a fucking smidgen of fire. That shit's gonna light the fuck up. Nice, nice. That was your <laughs> shut up. Shut the Absolutely fuck up. Absolutely not. Nope. Dude, I've never lit this kind of hair on fire. I don't know how yeah. fuck it. How 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 much my tinder it is. Just like fucking gone. I'm not testing it. I paid sixty bucks for his mask. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. I, none of that shit bothers me. I don't even care about. I don't care about the mask, the the the, the hair being on so much. It's just that like it looks weird as fuck. The entire mask is melted to his face, and he yeah. looks like an egghead. Like he looks really bad. And it's just like I'm so glad we didn't get a, another film with that look. I would have actually been okay with them just ignoring the fact that that happened at all. <laughs> it's just like that looks so See, bad. I'll say this much because I said it about four. If you left it like that but you wrapped most of his face with a bandage over the mask i could get behind that could be fucking cool but with how they end the movie where he wakes he's supposed to wake up and ostensibly kill her no one's gonna wrap the mask for him maybe he'll just do it maybe he just finds some gauze and he's like fuck it this really fucking hurts man (laughs) (laughs) yeah okay (laughs) he wakes up she goes oh she goes you get me some gauze i'll let you do your two weeks and get the fuck out of (laughs) here Two weeks later, he'll be standing outside in a car waiting for her. It is hysterical. That gotcha, we've, bitch. We've gone through this entire film, and we have not talked about... like we, I've mentioned it a few times, but we really haven't gone in about the end fight. You, would you say it's that's dumb. probably the most controversial shit about the movie? From a general audience perspective, of people that watch I, I this think, movie. I think just in general, Buster Rhymes is... Yeah, but I think this is the most. But if you want to pick a scene shit. that people probably hate the most, it's either that scene or it's the first karate fight. It's one of those two. I, I consider that either way. One either way, scene. it's gonna yeah. either way it's gonna be dealing with Buster Rhymes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean it's bad. I mean, not just because of the stuff with Freddy though, because like, yeah, you know, like I like Bianca Cancellich and other things, but when she comes out of that fucking was a closet or something with that chainsaw and starts saying oh, yeah. her friend's name this is for this this is for this this is for everybody and she like her, she's just like the li- the delivery so on the line bad. is so bad that it's just like it, you can't take it seriously like it's supposed to be this like triumphant moment where she comes out swinging trying to take michael down for her friends that he killed <clears throat> and it's just like it does not land this that's why it's all. so funny to me that like one time when she say like, help me, one of, the, one of the teenagers at the party goes, she's a really great actress. And I'm like, she's really not in this movie. She's really not a great actress. <laughs> and, That's the only part of the movie where I thought she was like bad. Yeah, yeah, she's, but she's just like, her performance is not there. She's just there. She's just there. Like, 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 any, like a lot of the other actors, she's just kind of there. But the problem is that everybody else has these like annoying personalities. And she's kind of just there a plank of wood it, um, and i said it to you at work is that this is first the screen. first film i've noticed where like there's a reason they're called scream queens and that screaming has to feel like a natural sense of terror and then when she screams it seems like someone hit a cue like scream she goes okay ah! and it's not like it's a bad scream but it doesn't fit what's supposed to be happening like when they do her interview and she screams i'm like this seems like this was not supposed to happen. This seems like a very wrong scream to do for the moment. It's also really funny because uh, they're like, that's how she gets the job. Yeah. Like, that's one of the things like where Freya was like super endeared to her was, wow, what a scream. Yeah. And I'm over but here also, like, I believe, a dog I thought, shit scream. For some reason, I thought that also like they, the Bianca Kajlis herself says like, yeah, that screams how I got cast or something. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's not... Whoops. Okay. This is mirror um, But uh, 
Yeah, like I mean, I think she's she's like I love uh, rules of engagement. Yeah, it's like that's she's, the actress. She, she oh. yeah, she's one of she's really great on that too. Uh, but this is just like it, to be fair, she has nothing to do. Yeah, like it, her character is so boring. It has nothing to do with her. And you you brought up the fact where it's like oh she's got a rules of engagement. Can we just from now on just say like. If you have to just say that someone's bad in a movie and then you continue to say they're bad in all their movies, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Like, I'm sick of people saying that, like, this people person's not good in, in this office. movie. They're a terrible actress. Like, hey, they're probably not. You're probably wrong and you're an asshole. Everyone can be bad in anything. Like, this, you have a fantastic actor be directed by a shitty director in a shitty film they have a bad performance that sucks they're not a bad performer it's different like will smith is a great is an incredible actor after earth is bad and he's yeah, bad in like, it you know I, i'm oh, sick well. of this something about people being stubborn as fuck on shit like that like yeah man they've always been bad like you watch two movies man shut the fuck up like, you can't just say that about someone's entire career of filmography when you haven't watched it. Yeah. That's such some stupid dude bro shit where it's like a, yeah, I've got enough of it. It's like, hey man, just say your fucking brain doesn't work and leave. Like, no one wants to talk to you. If you're talking to people about films and you're going to say, I watched two of their films, their dog shit, nobody here is going to be like, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good perspective I'm getting from him. I never thought about that. Yeah. They're all going to say, wow, you're a fucking mongoloid. Go leave, caveman brain. Like, it's yeah. stupid. I've seen, I mean, like, hey, uh, we both love Tom Cruise in movies. But, like... Oh, he's not he's... bad in anything. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> what do you think is his Mission... worst performance? That I have seen? Probably Mission Impossible 2. I don't that think he's very that good bad. in that. Because he's not playing... He's not playing... He's playing a completely fucking different character, and it's not a character that fits him, even remotely. <laughs> I don't think his performance in Risky Business is as great as everyone says it is. The thing that always gets me about the performance in, um, I, I'll never forget when I watched Mission Impossible 2, and he was like, stay alive. I'm not going to lose you. Well, that's why it's funny. I remember when we were talking about I'll it. Never, I will never forget seeing that for the first time and saying, what the fuck was that? I remember I, I had binged the Mission Impossible films, and I was like, yeah, two fucking sucks. And you're like, two's a bad movie. No, nah, it wasn't that bad. I, I, I remember liking it, and you rewatched it, and you said to me, like, yeah, you're right. Fuck that movie. <laughs> well, it was kind of funny. Like, I, you get, we're, we, we, we have fun. I know. We get we'll, to the third we'll act get, of that we'll movie. Completely, the third the act of that movie just completely falls apart with literally one line. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. She's she is good in other shit. Yes, but look, bad movie's bad movie. Yeah, and the the no one really, no one escapes this movie in, in any. Like K. Sackoff's really good in shit too, but like the movie's just not good. It's not well written. the The dialogue is often really cringeworthy, and the characters have zero dimension. There's nothing to latch onto as an actor here. <laughs> like, I there's will, nothing to do. I am curious if I will dislike this more than the remakes when we watch them at some point. I'm very curious because I, this movie sucks, but it's so inconsequentially bad. Whereas the remakes sometimes are like upsetting. Jesus Christ, dude! Like, who the fuck said you should do this? But maybe I'll feel differently if I rewatch them soon. Maybe I'll maybe be I'll like, re hey, maybe we already different. watched them say that, they, that we all made a mistake and we should reevaluate these movies. I mean, I'm not gonna hold no. my breath, but no. <laughs> the society did not hey, make man. a mistake on saying these movies are bad. I'm sorry, like. Hey, man, I ro I rolled back on uh, on on Chris and Michael Myers. I yeah, you know, I never know. Never know. Unless you're watching a film within a ten year difference in age, maybe from teenager to adult. I highly doubt someone's gonna be like a, yeah, that uh, two stars out of five is now four and a half. Who the fuck does that with rating films? If if it's not like like I said like fourteen year old versus like twenty four year old or twenty five year old. Yeah. Like, yeah, when you're a teenager, guess what? Your brain is dumb. Like you don't value what you should in film a lot of the time. You say, hmm. 
kind kind of a badass kicks some ass. He's got a pretty girlfriend. This is a good movie. But when you're an adult, you'd be like, hey, what the fuck is this dialogue? <laughs> what is I don't going know. on? I don't know. It kind of depends because it's like, on the one hand, I agree. Most of the time, I would say people's opinions don't change that drastically. Yes. But, but as you go as you go on through life and as years pass, you, you gain new perspectives and experiences that change the way that you absorb things. And I wouldn't say it's out of the realm of possibility that I could. I wouldn't say that you know I'm gonna go from you know like I really fucking don't like Halloween two the remake. I, I absolutely cannot stand it. But you know I've talked to a lot of people and I've read a lot of you know analysis uh, analyses. And in video essays and stuff like that, and you know, if I if I rewatched it, looking at it from a different perspective, my 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 review could change. Sure. Is it going to go from being you know one point five stars or point five or, or a star or something to being a five star rating? Probably not. No. Th- but I think you could go from from hating a movie to liking a movie in a rewatch. You can. It depends. It definitely depends. can. For I wouldn't any- say that like it's something that would be like. <laughs> something you would do repeatedly where it'd be like you would watch a bunch of movies that you watched as a kid so or watch as you were i, I don't want to change genres anything. completely but this is going to be a shift but like there's a difference between reevaluating uh, a remake of a film that is a sequel like halloween 2 versus like say amazing spider-man 2 the modern climate for when amazing spider-man 2 came out was a lot more altered by the current content coming out Sony's releasing Spider-Man. Uh, Fox has the X-Men films coming out again with Brian Singer. We had these Marvel films going strong. We had Man of Steel come out. And, you know, DC's warming up. There's a huge influx of superhero content that has people having their hopes getting higher and higher and higher and higher. And there is no hero on the level of Spider-Man besides, in the general audience, Batman and, to a degree, Superman. So when you have a second Spider-Man film coming out with the most traditional spider-man suit ever brought to screen there's a lot of expectations goblin's gonna be in it Electra's gonna be in it people have had their shifted opinion on garfield but the trailers were interesting to say the least so when the film came out there's a lot to meet up to yeah so when people left the theaters i'm a teenager i'm saying i had a lot of fun with the movie a lot of adults dog shit movie fucking terrible ruined spider-man i'm not getting it you now we're in a different climate for superheroes. I think you can reevaluate Amazing Spider-Man 2 and say, hey, this was very much brought upon by kind of the cultural pressure with superhero films and what we're supposed to be expecting of this and that I really made this disappointing. Not the film. There is problems with the film. It's not a fantastic movie. There are a lot of problems, but a lot of that film's issues came on by current superhero climate, if you want to be honest. Versus a film in 2009 of a sequel to a franchise that at this point, it didn't matter as much. Like, the original is what's important. People have their own individual takes on it. Horror had a big revitalization after 2010, as far as for general audiences. But in this point, it wasn't what it was. It's still a cult atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, it's not like any current climate is changing your perspective on this film maybe the first one i'll say yeah it's kind of hard to make a remake of halloween that's different but for halloween 2 reevaluating it isn't much about the same way of like what is society shaping me to be like it's more about your own expectations to a degree sure you know you can expect certain things from a halloween film but i don't think you're going to have the same type of why we need to reevaluate it i don't think you're ever going to have somebody jump on being like i really hated this movie to saying I was completely in the wrong. I think it's easy for people to say I found something to like in it because there's a lot of ideas. There's a lot of vague atmosphere that you could inject ideas into. Yeah. But I think that comes down to the fact that they didn't realize anything on their own. And it makes it easier for somebody from an audience to say, this is how I see it. And to a lot of people, feeling like you're involved in the movie helps a lot of them. So it makes them feel like, hey, if I'm putting my own involvement in, I'm making stuff feel like it's more crafted. I like this movie more. Sure. But that doesn't speak about the quality of the film, personally to me. I don't think the, the Rob Zombie films get the same treatment of, like, reevaluation that I think the term really should bring about. 
I think reevaluation is going back in time to really saying this is why the climate shaped your interest in these films. The the Halloween four, five, and six are films that could be reevaluated, especially four, because four was hated when it came out. Four was hated because it wasn't the original Halloween. That's a film that if you were alive in the 80s and watched as a teenager, you have to reevaluate because you have to take yourself out of that time period and say, hey, you know what? As this film, as it is, it's a good fucking movie. It's very spiritual to the original one and it brings a lot of the same ideas and it's a lot more of a love letter. Whereas the remakes are just different films. And I don't think someone's interest is going to be changed depending on a reevaluation because it's not the climate setting that, it's just how you feel this director handles things. I just think that also from a, from a certain perspective for some people, I think we'll go into a franchise movie and we'll be evaluating it also as a movie within that franchise. 100%. Like it's a sequel, and, not a remake. Yeah. And I think that also to a degree, that's something that is not, I don't want to say it's inescapable, but I think it's something that's natural. I would say inescapable is not a uh, harsh term to use, though. I think that's what happens when you have a name attached to it. The same way you fall into that same problem with shit like Star Wars, Pirates of the Caribbean, Transformers. You have yeah. a name that's become a blockbuster type film. There's going to be a legacy that follows it. Yeah, I just think that maybe there's a possibility you know, that, that part of my evaluation of certain movies and certain franchises, not just Halloween, comes down to how I perceive the franchise rather than the movie that was given to me. The same way you uh, felt differently about H2O because you feel like it's not a Halloween type film in some atmosphere. Yeah, but also at the same time, though, is it a good movie? Yeah. It shows a good movie. Yeah, absolutely. So it's fine. So the question, my question is, is, am I evaluating these two movies based purely on them being good or bad? Or is a lot of that also colored by my opinion of how it perceives the franchise? Yeah, you know? I, I I don't disagree. I feel I like wouldn't anticipate my my for score you moving up personally. For you personally, I don't think you're the type of person that's holding the legacy of Halloween to these films. I think you're very good at separating that. I feel like you, I know that, you can I say know this I, is a remake. This is a reinterpretation. These are sometimes not that I struggle with it, but like I think even I could be more critical about reimaginings whereas you say like hey it's different like the disney remakes you're a lot less critical on they are on them than i am i'm a lot more critical i think you're very good at separating it. i don't think you're going to have that much of a different perspective yeah, I, personally. I wouldn't expect my 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 you know my review even if i did like it more i wouldn't expect it to move up more than half maybe a star. a star or something half a star or something i'm not saying that it would, it would move up you know from 1.5 to fucking you know four four and a half stars or something but mm -hmm. I do think there's a chance that these are movies that I would enjoy more when I'm actually putting, you know, what the, the filmmaker's trying to give me rather than what I was hoping for, I guess, mm -hmm. or what, as a fan of the franchise, I want out of a Halloween movie. You want to know um, a, a fun fact? I remember when I had watched Halloween 2 for the first time, I posted on Facebook about it where I was like... The remake? Yeah. I, I don't know why I... I don't do shit like that often. I was like, this movie's dog shit. <laughs> and I just said it in like, I don't know where somebody from our high school was like, hey dude, why do you not like it? I'm like, the fuck is your problem? <laughs> and I was like, this movie fucking sucks. I was like, so like, what the fuck dude? Like, I just listed off. I was like, I just don't think it's very good with this and this and this. And the dude's like, all right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, at least, it, at least it wasn't someone saying, well, you just didn't understand it, bro. Man. Anybody who says you don't understand it for a film is a fucking douchebag. Most of the time. Yes. Most of the time. Most of the time. I was say most of the time. Everyone has different things shaping how they see things in the world, how they feel about it, how they emotionally resonate. Your emotional resonation to a film is going to decide on how good it is to a large degree. Not that the craftsmanship is bad in a film, but if someone isn't able to latch on, it won't mean anything. That's why yeah, my favorite film of this year was Last Night in Soho, and some people don't even like it. Which is fine. Everyone has the, the agree to put themselves into a film and say why it's necessary or, or why they love it. And Some people say, this is just not for me, and that's totally cool. People who make it personal about themselves 
You didn't work on the fucking movie. Shut up. Yeah. I think it's very tough to to make a good argument for getting upset about someone else's opinion on a movie. Yeah. If someone told me they loved Resurrection and I got mad about that, yeah, I am an them, absolute dude. fucking behemoth moron. Like... Yeah, like, oh, I, I adore... Uh, oh, I adore Fre- Freddy's Dead. Like, me getting annoyed about that movie, which I would probably wager is the worst sequel out of the three big right, franchises. Right. I would say Freddy's Dead is probably the worst movie. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> if someone says, I adore Freddy's Dead, who fucking cares? Yeah. That's like, um, <laughs> when we were talking to that guy at the Good convention you, one time when, um, about the, the Friday movies that I don't like, oh. or his favorites, and you're like, uh, how do you feel about that? I don't, he was like, well, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were talking. We were He's talking a nice guy. We... I, I I totally get the perspective, but like, fuck, Jason goes to hell still. Yeah, it was really <laughs> funny because the guy's like, yeah, Jason goes to hell is my favorite. I just kind of looked at you and you're like, yeah. Yeah, man, it's not my fault he has to see a therapist. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, getting getting mad about people's opinion, unless their opinions are literally like dismissing. Things. Yeah, people being dismissive and, of like actual events in a film, or like they're they're trying to make it bad. Like you can tell when someone's like yeah. uh, misconstruing just like story something. just to make it fit a narrative. Like, yeah. it's not about them not liking it; it's about them making being it disingenuous. what it isn't. They're being disingenuous about. Yeah, about it's like, hey, movie. maybe you so. shouldn't say that about something that doesn't exist in this film, and you're making bad word of mouth about something that isn't that. Yeah, when you're like completely willfully ignoring things that are counter to your point. Yeah. Um, but I would like, love if you want, the if you, idea of me getting even, so even mad then, at though, someone like, saying they don't like Back to the Future, though. Like, imagine like, someone just like in a background being like, "Yo, Back to the Future's dog shit." You hear me go like, "I'm gonna fucking kick your ass!" Like, he was like running up on somebody because they said that. Yeah, like, I, like even with uh, you know people doing stuff like that where they're, they're like willful, willfully ignoring things. Like, even then, like, getting mad about it, I, like, it takes too much fucking energy. Stupid. But calling them out, different story. Especially people who are, like, actual paid journalists who are, like, willfully just not including huge parts of movies to discredit, to, to make it so that they're not discrediting themselves. They're what even is a modern day journalist at this point? You know what I mean? It seems involved. like modern day journalists don't actually watch what they talk about half the time. No. No, I mean you just you just have to look at just have to look at someone like like Grace Randolph. It's just like, do you remember the, I, um, the not even gonna pay attention? Per- basically, basically, I don't like this actress or this person, so I just I'm gonna be an asshole. Remember uh, so. the Witcher review that one person that was covering it. I don't know if it was for BuzzFeed or someone, but they're like they didn't watch the show. They watched three episodes and they're like, yeah, this show sucks. And I don't even think there were like three episodes that were like in a row. It was like three, one, five, episodes. and eight. I think it was. Yeah, and it's just like, how the fuck did you expect to know what the fuck was going on? The funny thing though is the things they complained about were technically true, but they had yeah. no basis of not not technically true, but like the things they complained about. I was like, you know, I would feel that, and I watched the whole show. But you technically aren't allowed to feel that. Like, remember I read the review. I was like, "Yo, it's not that you're wrong. You're just stupid." Like, <laughs> that shit was funny. People got really mad at them. I was like, "You know, you should be mad at them." But like, are they lying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> even then, though, it's just like, whatever, man. Like, I'm just gonna watch the show for myself. I but... would love to meet somebody that loves Resurrection. I'd love it. I run into a couple of people. There's a couple of them in Killer Flicks. Mm, really? Yeah. Same thing with Freddy's Dead. There's people who like Freddy's Dead too. Whatever. Good for you. I guess. Except for li- <laughs> I'll say for literally pretty much any movie. I, like hey, if, if you I have just... a if you have a good coherent, well thought out, like you know what you're talking about. This is why you enjoy. It. Or even if you just say to me. It's just stupid, and I enjoy watching it. It's funny. Whatever. See, dude. that's kind of thing. I feel like horror have a reason. There's so many different spectrums of it. Like, I don't think many horror fans, not many, but I don't think some horror fans really care about a story sometimes. No. So they could just say, like, this is a good movie, but, like, dude, that movie doesn't even function. You go, yeah, but, dude, she's got double Ds. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, 
That's the problem with being a fan of these type of or, like movies or sometimes. It'll be, it'll be like, yeah, but like he took the hedge clippers and shoved them through her eye sockets or whatever. It's just like, yeah. or his eye sockets or yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's just like I said, double D's. You went right to the scene does... from fucking part five. You, no you, shit, you immediately <laughs> went to that. You're like, well, speaking of Vuva, I gotta mention this. <laughs> but like, uh, it's just one of those things where it's just like, either you have the people who want like a really cool movie. Or they want cool visuals, or they want blood and nudity, <laughs> or they just want blood, or they just want ex- an experience. Yeah, you know, it's like the difference between like watching a, Dar- a Dario Argento movie <laughs> and like a, you know a, a really sleazy '80s slasher movie. Yeah, you know, like two di- two very different experiences. And that's a beautiful thing. It's really cool that, that that the genre, like any other genre, can have a wide range of experiences. But it also is like, for some people, a good movie is a bad movie, and a bad movie is a good movie. Yeah. And they all have their own reasons for why they do or don't like these things. And it's really interesting. You, it's like some people, some people yeah. like horror movies that are actually bad because they're just fun to watch. There's that's good enough for them. Of. That's good enough for them. Yeah. And whatever, man. If that's good enough for you, good for, good for you, man. Enjoy. Whatever. There's plenty of them out there for you. I would rather enjoy myself watching a movie and not just ironically. I think there's nothing wrong with watching a bad movie and having fun with it if it's no. like an enjoyable experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it I wouldn't has, call this one of those. enjoyable, who cares? Yeah, I wouldn't call this one of those. Oh, absolutely not. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not for me, at least. I, I would yeah. uh, definitely agree with you on that one. It is fun. Yeah, though. I mean, there was one like you you watched um, Demon Wind or whatever, right? Oh fuck, that's not enjoyable. No, 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 that's not enjoyable. Like I jokingly want our buddy Roman to watch it because it's fucking bad. Like <laughs> oh my god, it, it's I like want, the I worst want a live, Evil Dead. He did a live drunk commentary for one. I can't remember which movie it was for, and it was fucking hysterical. I, I would love I would pay Roman really to watch Demon money. Wind. I would I would raise my Patreon pledge to wa- to wa- listen to him with video and audio watch fucking Demon Wind. You should have a pledge just called ten dollars Demon Wind. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> once a month I must watch a Demon Wind drunk. I would love to. I would I would support the fuck out of that. I would watch that. Demon That'd Wind really is funny. Terrible, but it's definitely worth a watch. I'm trying to think of like a really bad horror movie that I've watched that I like that's funny. I would genuinely watch Leprechaun. Troll 2 again. Troll 2 is fucking is funny. I watched half of Troll 2 with you. It's funny. The entire thing is pretty funny. It's certainly entertaining. That's Not even just like the the like they're eating her, then they're gonna eat like the memes are good. Uh, I mean they're they're played out now, but like the actual film is just as funny. Oh my god. Yeah, there's some good shit in that movie. Yeah. It's it's not yeah. known as like the best worst movie, but like it is you enjoyable. Can't, you can't piss on hospitality. Yeah. You can't beat the classics. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Speaking of classics. Resurrection's not that kind of movie though. No. <clears throat> but it definitely does piss on hospitality. <laughs> oh, yeah. It it definitely took the name of Halloween and pissed all over it in different ways. And the reason why it got remade after this, and they just said, "Yeah, we're good. We'll call yep. it quits on this one." This is it's the end sucks. of an era. It it kind of sucks though, because it was like there was a, a potential really cool sequel I've told you about before. Idea a sequel idea where um, Lori's son came to Haddonfield in the winter Ooh, to hunt down actually, Michael. With uh, with Sheriff Brackett, yeah, yeah, and that could have been really, really cool. That could have that been, been cool. a really, well, especially cool with Harnett. Yes, I would have actually been really happy that this movie exists to get to that. Yeah, that would have been enough for me to be okay with it. Do you know what's funny? That sounds though, really cool. In um, uh, Resurrection, they say that Michael killed four students. He doesn't kill four students in the movie. He only kills two students. So that had me one thinking. Gir- one girl. And one boy. One boy. So that had me thinking, are you telling me that from H2O to Resurrection, he goes out of his way to kill John and his girlfriend somehow? 
That's the only way I could think that makes sense because he does not kill four students. There's a deleted. I think there. I think they said there was a deleted line for resurrection that said that her son's. Uh, they, the nurses were saying like her son won't even come visit her anymore. Oh, I. I don't. So I think I was. think John was supposed to still be alive. So. I don't know so why who the, the line says killed? four no, students, not four people died. Not four people. Four students. So I don't understand why they said that. Yeah. So it had me thinking, like, is that their way of saying they killed John? Because if so, I'm Gross. pretty fucking mad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I got nothing else to say about resurrection. I just had to drop that little tidbit of dog shit. It was... Yeah, this, movie, this movie's not good. It's really yeah. bad. It's really bad. It still is I I like it less than five. Still. I think five has yeah. more merit to it. Well, and I, I would say I, I enjoy five more. Like yes. I like watching five more. I would say that five is a worse made movie overall. I would because ag- it feels like it feels like agree. this movie. It feels like this movie shot with at least a plot. Yeah. It's Whereas five is so scatterbrained and doesn't know where it's going. I think it comes down to like. But. If I had to work on a movie five, five is also visually interesting yeah the, the, like five has better cin- cinematography but like the editing some is, editing is worse just got got off but like, some of the editing in this is really fucking bad too yeah so. but it, it never feels like it's an unfinished product no it, it's just that there's certain there's certain sequences that are so incoherent oh yeah that it's just it's really really annoying <laughs> it's like this movie isn't very long it's like an hour and 28 minutes but it feels much longer. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like it, it feels like it takes ages for anything interesting to happen. And even the things that are interesting are not very interesting. If you had to give resurrection a score, what would you give it? I can't even remember what I gave five. But I, was, I, I think I gave five like a five out of ten. I think I was lower than you. You were lower than me. You might have given it a four. I will still stand by five as being a five out of ten. Three out of ten. I, w- I was going to uh, give it a four out of ten for Resurrection. Mm. I think I'll give it a four out of ten. Yeah, I'll go with a three. I was going to go down to 2.5, but I can't justify that. I think I just don't feel too much strong distaste for movies anymore. Yeah, I mean, like, no, I, I'll I, give I, it a three out of ten. This movie fucking I, sucks. I didn't, I'm I didn't thinking about like, it. Like, I really don't like. Shit I was in this. never, I was never angry watching this necessarily, but it's just like it's so boring, and there's nothing in this that is mildly interesting. Yeah. Really, if if there was at least the the fact some... that this ruins the end of H two O, instantly drops it a point two. <laughs> No, like, I I can't really. It's just so frustrating yeah. because of how half-assed. Yeah, I can't really include the beginning that in of my, this movie is. In my rating, I have, maybe I'll give it a three and a half out of ten. I'll give it three and a half, three and a half out of ten. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. I think that's a good way to finish off fucking Halloween marathon. A fucking shitty yeah. movie that yeah. neither of us like. The worst well, of the bunch. Well, the, the franchises usually uh, call it quits after a real bad one, so that's why they get rebooted. Because Halloween... It, I, I it actually, makes Jason Goes to Manhattan look like a fucking piece of yeah, cheesecake. Like Jason, it Jason looks delicious after this. Jason Goes to Manhattan is not that bad. No, it's just boring. It's really just not that bad. There's interest. There's fun, like, fun stuff in it, and the characters are... Some of the characters are really entertaining. Yeah. There's That already has something going for it. There's not a single character in this movie. Even the chef. Like, the chef is the best character. Yeah. He's still not good. He still <laughs> sucks. He's the best character, but, like, he's not a character. He barely exists. None of these people are fucking characters. Yeah. There's, and there's something really Freddy's funny about Freddy's the only one that has saying, dimensions, hey, we're, I guess. we're trapped in the Myers house. Let's get high. Like, that's really fucking funny to me for some reason. Like, yeah, why not? Even though we're on fucking I did, camera. I, did, I was say I did laugh a little bit because they're like, it's a good thing there's no cameras in here. And Katie Sack, I was like, we we are wearing cameras. Yeah. <laughs> I did laugh a little bit. That, that was pretty, pretty funny. Yeah. But you yeah, know that the movie, this movie's terrible. So it's, it's really bad. There's the a reason nice why this thing, franchise ended here. There's a nice thing about <laughs> this though. 
means we're done with Halloween. It means the next film we're watching is going to be looking like a fucking absolute piece of gold. Yeah, talk, ab- talk about talk about a huge disparity in, in, in quality yeah. between the movies we're watching. What's the, what's the day that the, that the next episode is going to come up on this 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 24th. next one we're about to re- we're going to record? So it'll be cri- just in time for Christmas. It'll be yep, be right before Christmas. Very nice. Very the next nice. film we're going to be doing is Black Christmas. So we were, we were originally going to do a whole month of Christmas movies, and it was going to lead up to Black Christmas, and we just said, "Well, we're 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 here, so we're just going to do all the hollow the, the original Halloween franchise, and we'll end December on." <laughs> I'm, so we're having Halloween in December until the end of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of happy we did that. I think it's nice yeah, that... I had fun, so... Yeah, it, it's nice that we finished the Halloween franchise. These H2O also was a nice surprise. We've done. Like, H2O I was, was a nice surprise, something. and... You know, I would hate to watch three new Christmas horror films and not like them a yeah, lot. Yeah, because the, the only one of the ones that we had selected were that, we, that you had seen was Black Christmas. Yeah, I think because we don't, it, was, it, was four, it was four episodes I think Silent Night Deadly Night Krampus Black Christmas I don't think we've picked another one oh so it probably would have been something like maybe Gremlins or something so you would have at least seen two movies Ooh, you know I don't but. Gremlins is definitely a Christmas movie yes but, it is yeah. it is it is it is a horror movie Gremlins is more of a Christmas movie than a horror movie yeah it's it's one of those movies where it, again it's an Amblin production yeah. where it's like it is a horror movie. If I had to define it, I would define it as an adventure. It's movie. children. It's children's horror. I would define it as like it is an adventure film. Yeah, I would say it's children's horror, despite the fact that the movie is. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have a child watch it. Oh, dude, I have my I'd have my kids watch that. Like a child, child. When I say no, child, they gotta I'm learn like fast. People. They gotta know what what raised Papa. You know. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll show my I'll show my uh my future children saw. Start them young, man. They'll be lucky. <laughs> I had to wait fucking twenty five years. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. But yeah. No. Black Christmas but is we... gonna be next week. Yeah, I'm really looking forward. This is one of my favorite horror movies. So. I'm excited, but uh I feel like I gotta be in a certain mood for Black Christmas, which has me worried about when I'm gonna eventually watch it. It's even better because it's really funny that we we just talked about Halloween. And how much of a precursor to Halloween Black Christmas is, oh, especially be considering couldn't Bob exist without it. We're gonna make another movie. We're gonna call it Halloween. So Ties they're very, it. very tied together. Yeah. So it's really cool that Halloween that's takes a lot more out of Black Christmas than Texas Chainsaw. I agree. The only thing that I would say the the thing that I think Halloween takes the most from Texas Chainsaw is just that like human threat idea. Like, yeah. Obviously, Black Christmas kind of has the idea, but like, you don't really know anything about he, him. He's he's a human, obviously, but you don't know who he is. Yeah, you don't know shit about you him. You never right. see his just body, like fully yeah, in frame, him. focused. Yeah. So like the cool that like Michael Myers takes that idea where it's like somebody you know could be this person. Yeah. So we'll get more into it when we do the episode, but I'm excited to talk about the ending a lot. <laughs> Me too. I think it's like my favorite ending to a horror film. Uh, it is one of those moments where I just kind of sat there in my chair and I was just like, Whoa. yeah, probably just couldn't move to till next week. Then till next yep. week. All right. We're excited. We'll see you guys. Then we're going to have a good time. I, I really hope you check out that episode. Thanks for watching fucking resurrection with us, I guess. I'm sorry. See you later then. Like I said, next week, a huge jump in quality. Just, just check that out. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.